Hey everybody, welcome back to Minecraft and the Create Mod. I'm Joe Mama, your host. So take a look behind me and you're going to see a strange tunnel. Actually, I guess it's not that strange considering it's pretty easy to build by hand. Pretty easy concept. But would you believe that was built by a tunnel boring machine? That's right. Thanks to the Create Mod and to the uh, enterprising wisdom of Rage Plays Games, I think his name is, if I remember correctly, and Bored Bob for pointing this out to me. So here we are, topside, brand new day, and I've got this chest set up here. Uh, I've got some materials in it that we're going to use to build our contraption, because that's what this is. This is going to be a Minecraft, contra Minecraft cart contraption, and we'll operate on railroad tracks. But we need some materials, obviously, to build it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to need. Now, for what we're going to do, all we really need is probably 25 drills. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a stack of linear chassis, some deployers. I think it's about nine. And then, let's see, we got our mechanical drills. We got our deployers. Uh, we've got plenty of rails. So we've already got a minecart, furn uh, furnace minecart. We're going to go ahead and grab one of the uh, mechanical plows. You'll need that. And let's go ahead and grab one slime ball. We're not actually going to use um, super glue because it's a little bit buggy. And I'm told that... Uh, Slime balls are the best way to go. Again, this is not my design. This is a fellow by the name, a user by the name of Rage Plays Games. So we're gonna go with his, and it seems to work pretty well uh, if done right. And I can't promise that I, the illustrious Joe Mama, are going to do anything right. So let's see. All right. So because this is in fact a minecart design, a minecart contraption, let's verify something. We want to go east. Okay, that way is east, as you can see by my HUD. We want to go east, and we're going to build this machine right from the get-go, oriented to the east. That's the best way to go. I don't mean east is the best way to go. I just mean it's best to build it according to a predetermined direction that you have for the drill. The reason we want to go east is because there is a village to our east by like a thousand blocks, I think. There's also an end portal and we want to reach that end portal. I'd I kind of like to get the dragon killed and then at that some point we can actually take the mining machine to the end or we'll build one specifically for the end and we can use it as a bridging tool, but you know, one thing at a time. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna place this cart down I just want to test something here. I want to see which way it's going to go. I'm kind of hoping it goes east, because if it does... Okay, good deal. We'll place our cart assembler down. We're going to start with that. And then let's go ahead and place our furnace cart down. Now, I'm assuming it's pointed the right way, but we shall see. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to start building our contraption. So first of all, let's start right cha. Okay, we want to take our linear chassis. Now, the way he does it, he actually takes this first block and splats it, but I'm not so sure we have to do that. Splats it with slime balls. I'm not so sure we have to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway because he did it as part of the video and it seemed to hold together pretty well. But, again, you, you try it without it and see what happens. It might work. So let's see, we want to go one, two, three, and I think... Am I right? Okay. Then we want to attach this. No. 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 We want to attach that there. Okay. Slap our slime ball there. And then we want to take one mechanical plow and put it right here. Now the purpose of this is to scoop up the rails as this thing travels. This is the back. Okay. This cart, as it travels, is going to uh, do so on rails, but it needs to scoop up the uh, it needs to scoop up the rails once it's done, so that allows for an infinite number of rails. So one, two, three, and then let's see what we're gonna do is let's see one ahead, not here, but rather right here. We are going to set up a deployer. So let's see if we can take the deployer and I think if I'm doing this right we shift 
and put it down. Yeah, just like that. Okay, cool. So we put our deployer basically one, two blocks ahead of the cart. And what that's going to do, oh, you know what? Before I forget, let's go ahead and take a piece of rail and set our filter on this thing. And there we go. So th that way, this deployer will only put down bits of rail. And attach that there. And we're gonna go ahead and slime that, otherwise that deployer will not be attached. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. This is going to be the general shape of the tunnel. And the way this is going to work, it's going to have deployers. Let's see if I get this right. First of all, let's slime it. We take two drills and we put them right in the center. One, two. Oh. No, no, not like that. Not like that. Come on now. Work with me. Okay. So we've got that, and now we're gonna attach our deployers. Attach the drills first. It, they will act funny if you try to place them after the deployers have already been attached. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Okay, so we attach the deployers. These deployers are going to be the things that place our uh, cobblestone tunnel. Now, the, it could be any material you want, but remember, this machine, anything that the drills pick up is gonna go into the inventory, and the deployers will pull from that contraption inventory and probably more than anything probably the most disposable block that will be very abundantly available is going to be cobblestone now if we were doing this in the end we might want to use that end stone or whatever it is that uh, raw end stone but since we're not doing it in the end we're going to use this machine right cha for basically a singular purpose we're going to use cobblestone Okay, so now we've got the machine that builds the tunnel and bores out the inside. Okay, there we go. So, let's see, one, two, three. Okay, yes, yes, I got it right. All right, so let's go ahead and finish it off. We're gonna do five by five. So let's go ahead and mark off the five by five. Oh yeah, so we might as well go ahead and dig down underneath this. Just get that done now. Let's see, is that right? One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Counting with Joe Mama. Okay, Joe Mama taught you how to count, right? Okay, I think if I don't, I, I'm always cautious about how I set these, I set any kind of blocks up. So let's go ahead and put them down like that. I want to hit shift, you know, but I don't think I need to. Okay, and there. So there's, there is our tunnel. Now, obviously we need to slime this whole thing up. So let's go ahead and make it sticky. Okay, now let's see. Can I take that off? Probably not. Can I shift it? No. I thought I could shift it, but maybe I can't. All right, whatever. We'll leave it like that. Probably isn't gonna cause a problem. Probably. So let's go ahead, um, do our drills, but we're not going to need as many as you might think. So we go around the edge. Oops. That fell right there, yes it did. We basically need them everywhere except where those two drills are back here. What we're actually going to do is we're going to put a set of deployers here. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. Well, don't we need to drill it? Doesn't the thing ahead need to be drilled to make room for this? Well, it's funny the way these mechanisms work, these contraptions, a lot of times their hitbox isn't what you think it is. So try not to worry too much about it. Just like watching Star Wars or some other science fiction movie, don't think about the impossibilities that it could not be possible because I assure you, it is possible. So what these two will do, these are actually going to place blocks. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put a filter in there for the cobblestone. These are actually going to place blocks ahead of the machine if there's an open gap to ensure that any water blocks or lava source blocks are destroyed. So that will get them out of the way and then these drill bits right here will bore them out and destroy them. 
but trust me there is a drill bit for each block that this uh, that this machine takes up so don't worry about that all right, so let's go ahead and prepare to shriek. So here's what we're gonna do though. We're actually going to put a couple of, oh yeah, yeah, we definitely, if slime gets on there, we definitely don't wanna be dragging dirt with us. So there's that. So let's make sure that any place where slime might be is clear. Okay, I wish I could take that off, but now I can't, so that's stupid. All right. So we're going to put a couple of chests here and one and two. No, not there. Okay, let's put one there and let's do the same thing on the other side. This basically is going to be the inventory for this drill machine. It's kind of funny because uh, one of the jobs I had required working uh, or at least overseeing a project that required a tunnel boring machine. Pretty awesome. And they laid their own tunnel segments behind them. And I used to see them on the trucks going by and wondered what the heck they were, but now I know. So, things that go on that you never know about. All right, so what we're gonna do is if I hold control down, we're actually going to, let's see. Control. We're gonna bring this, okay, one, four, five. We're gonna bring this all the way down to one so we don't get any weird stickiness situation. I think that'll do it. I don't think we're asking these linear chassis to stick to anything more than is already there. To anything more than one block. I think that should work, all right? But here's what we need to do. Before we can turn this thing into a contraption, let us, Let's see, get access to the inventory. We're going to put, I would say, half a stack of cobble. We're going to put a full, let's, yeah, let's do half a stack of rails. We don't need a full stack. Let's do half a stack. And let's, we're gonna take one piece of coal for ourselves and put half a stack of coal in there as well. Now, because the inventory of this thing is whatever is going to be whatever it drills, whatever it mines, there's every reason to believe that it will mine coal. Now, one piece of coal will allow this furnace minecart to travel like 300 blocks or something. In 300 blocks, we can be rest assured that it will find more coal, right? So I think supplying it with a single piece of coal will be enough, but we're gonna give it a stack and I think we'll find that it's gonna be self-sustaining here in an overworld application. So I think our construction is finally done to, uh, to review, here's the explanation. This thing will move along. Oh, by the way, let's do this right now. Now, cart movement mode means that this will always face toward the, that the machine will always face the direction of the cart. We don't want that. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna make it into locking the rotation. We're gonna lock the rotation, which means it will always face east no matter what. This drill will always face east. And it looks like this cart is gonna travel in the right direction compared to this, so I think we should be in good shape. So what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and turn this into a contraption, and you're, you're gonna see this thing do some funny stuff here in just a bit. So, without further ado, flip, and there we go, okay. Placing blocks? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, fan freaking tastic. Okay, so now that it is, it is now a self-sustaining machine, and it did in fact move. It looks like it did. It didn't. No, it didn't move. It did not move. Okay, let's go ahead and wrench the minecart. There we go. Okay, we've got it. So you can see the cross-section of the tunnel that it's gonna produce. Okay, let's go downstairs and see if this thing works. Now we could place this pretty much any level we want. I'm choosing to do level 12. I tried level 11 here, but uh, it will drill through obsidian, but it takes a lot of time. So it gets hung up on obsidian and there's really no point in, uh, in going any lower or going down to the obsidian because remember, the track will be here, 
but its actual mining is going to be here. So I'm actually, let's see, let's go ahead and take some of this away. Then let's see if I place it like this. Did that work? Yes, it did. Okay, the deployer. Let me place this like that. And let's place this like that. Just to prime it. And, and let's hope like heck that this thing keeps in the same direction. It looks, I, I see the minecart like it might be facing the right way. So let's go. I think it's doing it. Is it doing it? See, it actually fell, the minecart. Oh, see, right there, right there. That's the problem. Right there is the problem. And okay, we want to make sure it is clear. Okay, it seems like that ought to do it. Yes. Come on, go, 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 go. Yeah? Yes. I think it's gonna do it. I think it's gonna sustain. Yep. I think it's gonna do it. <laughs> oh, this is weird though. Okay, so let's actually mine this out because that's gonna, yep, there it is. Let's get to the actual mine. Because of the way the hitbox works, it's really strange. Okay, now notice it's going to create this darkened tunnel around it. Okay, and if, you're, if, if you keep it unlit, it will spawn mobs and it will be death, but you can look around and see the ores around it that it's uh, that it is producing or that it is finding and I'm actually gonna walk this way and it's just gonna keep going if it runs into water with the way we set it up is it's going to use those front deployers oh something shooting at us oh hello there hello you get down there stay okay it's gonna use those front deployers to uh, place blocks to block out the um what do you call it the water source blocks and we can actually ride this thing if we so desire we could sit there just like this and ride it now meanwhile everything that is that it's drilling is depositing into these chests and it's there for us if we want it but uh we're gonna let it go we're I, we're gonna let this thing go as long as it can Oh, look at that. We got emerald right there. This thing should pick it up. And it should be in the uh, inventory. Now, the way we would actually stop this thing is you would get up in front of it. And you're going to see where the minecart is. You can wrench it. You can, If you can get to the minecart, you can just wrench it. All we have to do at this point is just wrench it. And it will uh, it'll pick this up. And then we can deposit it and use the, the cart assembler and... Uh, basically turn the give it or take away the redstone signal or give it a redstone signal whatever the case may be and uh, it will turn it back into a uh, stack of minecraft blocks but this thing will keep on going as we want it to okay so it's been about 24 hours I let the mining machine go on its merry way and if you take a look at the uh, at the X coordinate we're at 1308 and we were headed toward 14 something so about a hundred feet or hundred feet a hundred blocks short of our destination the machine ran into a little bit of an issue I mean it went that far it went 1300 blocks without uh, really needing to be dealt with but then it, it got to this point and it was, well, oh crap, 
crap, crap, crap. This is why I don't like hanging out in these places. This is a very dangerous place that it broke down. And it didn't really break down. It just stopped mining. And the reason it stopped mining was it was just plain full. It had all the uh, all those chests that we put on it. Yeah, they all filled with assorted materials. And I put a chest right here. After I, I took the machine apart and I pulled everything of eh, pretty decent value out of it. And uh, so a lot of redstone, lots of coal. You can see we already had quite the surplus of coal, some lapis and uh, this, some iron here. And I just threw in some extra blocks just because they're in my inventory. In fact, I'm gonna throw in a few more and some emeralds. Now the diamonds I pulled out and I already put them in a uh, in an ender chest. And it was about a stack and a half of diamonds. It was pretty crazy. And these 23 that I've got in my inventory right now was just me kind of brushing back through and picking up some things that, that the machine had brushed by but not picked up because they were quite out of, they were a little bit out of range. The inventory of the machine filled up to the point that when it laid down track, it couldn't actually pick them up because there was no slot left to put the track in. So it was depositing bits of track and other stuff and all kinds of blocks that it could not fit because the inventory was full. So because it couldn't put the track down, it couldn't go any farther. It ended up on an empty space, which was right about there. So we ended up clearing that up and got the machine to go another 100 feet. Uh, and then I'll show you where that is. Another 100 feet. Did I say another 100 feet? I meant another 100 blocks. So I wanna show you where we're at. Let's uh, follow this staircase up. We made it to the end portal. Okay, so I, yeah, truth, I mean, um, I used spectator mode to find out exactly where it was. I used, um, what is that thing called, chunk base? To find out where one was located and then just used uh, spectator mode to find that area. I mean, no, this, uh, this is a technical playthrough. This isn't an adventure playthrough, so don't, Fool yourself into thinking that this is that I'm going to be doing everything as the adventure part of it says we should. I use air quotes here. So we're playing this as technicians, and as technicians, we have tools. We're going to use those tools. So we did. We used those tools. So anyway, here we are. We're at the end portal, and the end portal really is a means to an end because when we, I don't think it's going to happen in this episode <laughs> because we got to kill the dragon, but. We can use this same mining tool as a bridging tool to get from uh, to get from the initial end island out to where we can start finding shulker boxes and shulker shells, right? So anyway, I just wanted to show you that we indeed made it here. Ah, and as you can see, I took the opportunity to grab the silverfish spawner. I mean, it's kind of a unique item. There's only one of these in each of these fortresses, and I'm not sure how many fortresses there are in the game. I've heard anywhere from three to 128. But looking at the chunk base map, it looks like there was quite a few. But anyway, I grabbed that because I could. Why not? Let's go ahead and recover these tools. And so I, ah, oh, you fudge nugget. Just go, go, away, really, really? I forgot these guys were a thing. Anyway, so we've got that, but anyway, let's go back to the main base and uh, we'll talk about a few things. Okay, so we are back at our damn base. Am I seeing what, I'm th what I think I'm seeing up there? Is that a skeleton? It's two skeletons. <laughs> Up there, caught in the uh, caught in the spillway. Oh, that's beautiful. Anyway, so yes, we are back here. We're gonna go ahead and lay out this bad boy. Let's see if I got the right one here. Let's see which one do you think it is? Because uh, if it is this one, one of these is. I should have taken it out of my inventory when I when I first got it. But one of these is gonna be the. Uh, the spawner. Let me, first of all, let's do that. Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. Turn that back on. Okay. And let's move this one down to the down to the hot bar. And let's take the wrench and pick that one up. Okay. So that one right there is our silverfish spawner. But this one right here 
is going to be our tunnel, our tunnel boring machine. Let's go ahead and put it down. All right. It went in a different direction this time. Okay. Um, not cool. But that's okay. We're not too worried about that. But anyway, let's... Um, can I open this? No, I can't. So let's flip that. And now I should be able to open these up. Okay. And as you can see... Oh, I missed some iron right there. Let's kind of go through and see if there's anything else we missed. Uh, okay, lots of cobblestone. Just an unbelievable amount of cobblestone. Got some weathered limestone. I think we got some straight up limestone in there somewhere as well. I thought... Oh, dolomite. Okay, I had that wrong. Let's take the lapis out of there. Let's see. Um, a lot of the usual garbage. Let's see what we got over on this side. Okay, obviously it's all useful, but, um, okay, we got some gold. I forgot to check for that. We got the some more iron, a lot of coal, a lot of flint. And what we got up there? Okay, and notice, no tracks. Okay, it actually used up all of its track space. So, anyway, there we go. So there's the drilling machine. That's how you recover it. Um, we are going to actually pick it up. But before we do pick it up, let's go ahead. Um, yeah, take that and... Oh, I can't pick it up because I have to flip the switch. All right. Switch over here. Yes, it is. Okay. Now I can pick it up. Got it. Okay. So right there, that's our, that is our mine literally our mining minecart. The other one is going to... Uh, actually, this one we can just put right in there. And we'll end up building a new one for going to the end. Or for going to the... Uh, for going to the nether. Okay, now I almost forgot about something. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back down. I almost forgot about an option that is available if you want. So, obviously we want to keep cobblestone in there to help build the tunnel. But you could actually extend the range of this thing if you wanted. I mean, you could do that a couple of different ways. There's obviously space left on the back where you could indeed put more chests. Um, and, and that would work. You could put them back here as well. That would work. But maybe another option available is you could take... Do I have any slime ball on me? Yes, I do, but I don't have any filters. What you could do is if you had some brass filters, you could slap them onto this chest, or you could actually put them back here or on some other place on this machine. I would almost suggest back here so that, so that uh, it would deposit things into the area outside the tunnel that would be reachable. Now, if you take a look inside, you can see there's a lot of materials caught up in here. Some of them are useful and some might not be. And it likes to say the dirt, for example, or I don't know. I mean, if you or if you wanted to pick up the andesite separately or the or the uh, diorite, you could slap, a, put some slime on there and then slap a filter or several filters if you want. And then have the non-critical items get deposited as the thing goes and that will open up space in the chest for uh, other things that you really really want to keep for example cobblestone coal rails and any valuables or you could have it deposit the valuables as well you know however you want to play the game so that's an option to consider and uh and one th and that is uh, one thing that might prove useful later on well, as you can probably guess by the gold boots that I have on, which make absolutely no sense otherwise, I've spent some time in the nether. And if you look behind me, you can see that I have indeed built us another tunneling machine, and there's some differences. It looks a lot like the last one, but there are some differences. Let's go over them now. So otherwise, it's pretty much built the same, except I did go ahead and set these um, at numeral two, so that it grabs both the chest, which you'll see, these two new chests are added on the tail end of the machine, which will be inside the tunnel, by the way. If you remember, these two basically just drag inside the tunnel. 
and uh, attached to them is a couple of filters. Kind of like we talked about earlier is we I set two filters. These will be attached to the entire inventory, even though they're, they're not just applying to these chests. These chests and this whole machine will all be considered one inventory. The filters on these apply to the entire inventory. And in this case, I've set it so that both the quartz and the, uh, the ancient debris will be dropped out the tail end. And then we can just pick it up. And I've added uh, one extra chest there. And let's see. Yeah, okay, I'll leave that at one. Okay, there we go. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's see, the only change other than that is that on these uh, pokey pokey machines, I've set the filter at netherrack. Instead of cobblestone like it was before, it's now netherrack. And the same for these pokey pokey machines right here. They're going to be filtered for netherrack. So it's going to build the tunnel out of netherrack. Not the strongest material, but it will work. And I've also set it to go east. So let's take a look. And I want to make sure, okay, if we look at our HUD, we can see it's pointed east. Right now, the machine, let me verify that it is on locked direction. Yes, it is cart move it, lock rotation. So therefore, it's going to stay pointed to the east. I've got some coal right cha. And all I need to do is flip the switch and we will go ahead and uh, secure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple other things. There was a couple other things, right? Cha. Right? Or was it here? It was here. Okay, I've thrown a bunch of coal in there. I threw a bunch of it in there because this thing will not be able to uh, provide its own coal. There's no materials that are going to be able to work, really, as a, uh, as a fuel. So it's going to have to be coal. And, of course, I've thrown some netherrack in there, and I've thrown some rails. Other than that, I think we can leave the thing pretty much as is. Um, I set this for rails. Did I not? Yes, I did. That shouldn't have changed. And let's go over to this side. I don't know if it has to be this side, but we're going to, we're going to do it. And if we flip the switch. Okay. Deposited netherrack. That's, that's a good thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good thing. It's locked. So let's go ahead and wrench this bad boy. Yep. Okay. There we go. So we've got it. And there it is in our inventory right there. And this is the tunnel we're looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and recover that and recover that. Now we'll leave that as is, I think. And let's make our way into the nether. And I've already prepared a place to set this bad boy up. Okay, east is that way. We are down at level 15. And there's a reason for that. Because for ancient debris, which is one of the things we'd like to get... Uh, we want to be at level 15. Everything I'm told says level 15 is the best level in the nether to, uh, to mine at. So why not set this thing up to be at level 15? Also, thanks to a buddy of mine doing a test, uh, Wintertooth100, he says, I hope I'm remembering this right, but he says, let's see if I do this, doop, do, okay, chunk border shown, that... The best results for getting um, for getting uh, ancient debris is to dig uh, within three blocks of the chunk border. I want to say so. This thing is going to be able to dig three on this side, two on this side. I could have made it. I could have made the drill head six wide, but I decided just to stick with the five. Um, and I've decided to let it continue to make tunnels. You know, I, I was almost going to change that. I was thinking I might actually change it so that it no longer creates a tunnel, but lava is such an issue in the nether that I think that would be stupid not to do that. So, yeah, we'll keep the tunnel, and it will also help keep ghasts and whatnot from forming inside the tunnel. That's the direction we want. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do your thing. Go places. Be awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, oh, oh wow though, look at it chew through this stuff. That is amazing. That is freaking amazing. Okay. Well, 
let's walk in behind it here. Let's go ahead in here. And let's see if, uh, let's see. Let's see if it's gonna go for us. I mean, if it finds quartz, right? It's gonna deposit it, dump it out the back maybe? Here's hoping. I don't know, should, maybe it won't. Wow, it's moving fast. It, I mean, it, I guess netherrack because it doesn't take much, maybe. Whoa, okay. Is there any quartz down here? Maybe there's actually no quartz, because there is. No, no, I know there is. I know there's quartz. Because I've seen it, right? There's quartz right there. It's going to deposit any out the back, perhaps? No. Well, as you can see, guys, this thing is chewing through the nether like crap through a goose, as George C. Scott once said. So we're going to let it do its thing for a while, and then we're going to pull it up and take a look at what's in the inventory, because I'm really curious whether or not the filter is doing its job. So stand by. Okay, guys. Wait, I let it dig for almost 1,200 blocks. Actually, it was 1,200 blocks because it started in the negative and it ended up positive like 1150 or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, it didn't drop anything. And I think I know why. But we're going to go ahead and deposit this thing. And let's see if we can find out what we got. Oh, by the way, and I found two or three bits of ancient debris just along the edge of the wall, and I didn't even look that closely, so I'm very eager to see what this thing has found. Oh, really? That? Okay, whatever. Okay, take a look at the filters. They're pointing the wrong way. <laughs> so, there's that. There we go, okay. Okay, and we can open the chest now, fantastic. All right, so let's see what all we've got. Okay, we've got a bunch of nuggets, whole bunch of netherrack, some quartz. Okay, a bunch of nuggets. Nothing there. Uh, nuggets. Okay, filled up pretty fast. And blackstone. I, I have a feeling that's probably what was. Okay, 13 ancient debris so it found 13 adding to our total makes it 16 ancient debris that's not too shabby could be worse all right what else we got i'm assuming we didn't get a whole stack of ancient debris i would be shocked if we did okay there's our track netherrack quartz um blackstone nope Oh, it, it, it just chewed through that stuff like you wouldn't believe. So, all right, but we managed to find 16 ancient debris using that method. It didn't take that awful long. But for the fu in the future, yep, see, look at these. They're pointing the wrong way. So now if we switch them in the future, they'll just drop out the back. So that's pretty cool. All right, guys, well, there you go. Automatic mining with a create mod right there. Pretty awesome if I do say so proved super useful in uh, getting all that that uh, ancient debris 16 pieces of ancient debris which doesn't sound like a lot but apparently it is that's a lot to get in a short amount of time this could prove useful also again we're going to try to do this in the end maybe next time we'll look toward killing the dragon and actually putting this to the test or here's a thought maybe we we don't actually kill the dragon and we just try to build one of these and set it up and just let it go and see if we can do it without killing the dragon. I don't know. There's a thought. Take a look. If you made it this far, take a look down in the description and you should see a link to the Discord channel. And uh, be sure to check that out and come visit us. Left it to the end so that way only the truly dedicated people will be there. Um, I think that is a good thing. But uh, yeah, go check it out. Um, 
Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe button if you found this useful and or entertaining. Really would appreciate that. I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.